twisted. <laughs> As Hunter said, I'm running off of it, uh, half half hour sleep. Are we? Did we what? Did, were we dead? I'm just. I'm just. I'm did trying. To, I'm trying, I'm trying happening? to find that out. What's going on um, here, <laughs> Hunter? I don't know if I need to continue or just let the sweet darkness take me. Um. Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> Well, it sounds like the stream's down for everybody. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> we even biohacked. Why? Why is the stream down? It says it's. It said it's live on my end. Like everything's live on my end. I'm just letting everybody know that I said a lot of hilarious stuff, and it's a damn shame they didn't hear it. Um, there were some solid punchlines. There was like there were solid punchlines. Uh, we're just gonna have a text chat. We're gonna we're gonna do a morning show by post. This is what's happening right now. In case we're still in case we're still going, we're just gonna do the whole show by typing it and then narrating it. So, dearest uh, uh, listeners, viewers, and lurkers, <laughs> we up. Appreciate my dearest your companions. patronage. As we journey, uh, that is not how you spell patronage. Patronus. Uh, Don't no. Welcome to the show, everybody. Are you typing it? They can't welcome hear us. Welcome back. Uh, no, the the the, the We've show's the show's back. Been We're back. Biohacked. <laughs> Please send help. We've been. Point? We have been patabled. Welcome, been welcome to <laughs> Web Ebeen Biohack. Oh, Please send help. <laughs> oh, we've been, I'm not looking at what I say. We've a been a biohacked. <laughs> masked singer fan. Uh, Junie is just uh, uh, typing as Borat. Uh, we've a been a biohacked. <laughs> Please send <laughs> help. Mess. We're a mass singer fan cast with attitude. What else do the people need to know? The, the um, stream is up. People can hear us. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everybody. I I, I know. This is all a bit. Oh, man. Uh, Judy. I like that for entertainment. Yeah. This was a big joke. We, we, we broke. We broke the stream on purpose. <laughs> That's right. C comedy. Um, Just like Beyonce, we broke the internet. You heard it here, folks. Warlocks and Waffles, the Beyonce's of the TTRPG space. Um, I don't want that one. I don't. I'm going to get I'm going to get angry you, you messages. Never do. I'm going to get never angry do. messages. You never want it. You never want it, but sometimes you get it. All right, everybody. This is what we're talking about today. Life. How's it for you, Hunter? How's life for you? It's good. <laughs> There's an outline. I'm not looking at it. I should be looking at it. I'm, I'm not. I don't have it up I'm either. Just, just I just I just assumed we're not using it today. Um, I, I wrote out so much. There's pages. There's pages in there. <laughs> um, very good, good content to, to keep us on track, on rails. Yeah, I'm I'm good. Um, we uh, <clears throat> I've had a lot of games this I have a lot of games this week. I had a uh, my Tuesday Ooh. group. Uh, so I have I have four groups that I run with pretty consistently right now. Um, two of them are two of them are monthly. One of them is every other week, and one of them is uh, weekly. And then I have like other groups that will occasionally schedule into that uh, that rotation. Um, but the uh, every once in a while there is a week where like everything lines up and so this week is one of those weeks so i have uh my uh tuesday group my wednesday group my thursday group and my saturday group uh all in one week which is very fun i i love those uh i love those sessions um yes juni if you have, if you have something to say no i'm just i'm listening to you i'm enjoying i'm listening to you this is active mm. listening okay i find this enjoyable <laughs> you what Continue. Okay. I'm skeptical. Um 
welcome, welcome to the show, y'all. Uh, I'm trying to think of if, if there was anything else I, I have done this week. I don't think so. Um, it's been a, a relatively uneventful week. Um, yeah. All right. How about you? Today is Friday. Uh, what happened this week? What what happened? It wasn't yes. Monday wasn't yesterday. I know that. No, no. Today's no. Friday. Today is Friday. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. Cool. It's just gone. It's all gone. Everybody, I was up all night crunching numbers, doing my taxes because I didn't. I I procrastinate and I didn't have to do that, but that's the way I did it. I got, I think, 18 messages from Junie over the course of the night that was just like asking random tax questions. And I kept being like, I, I'm not a tax expert, Junie. And he was like, yeah, but like, is peanut butter deductible? And I was like, I, I don't know. Like, maybe I'm not a tax expert. For legal reasons, we have to say that this is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> and also my judy father, absolutely does have somebody who like is a tax expert and he my never would have messaged me my about father-in-law it. is an accountant and yeah. i have a very very detailed expense report where i've outlined a lot of things and what gets used how and when y'all when it you was just, a lot of transactions just, i was making sure i, I categorized you just correctly is i think the first time i've ever made a joke where Junie was like now listen here, motherfucker. That's not even funny. That's not something we joke don't about. You, I'm I don't, don't you, need your help for taxes. Don't you fuck around with my taxes, sir. I stayed up all night on them, bitches. <laughs> they, they be clean. All right. <laughs> don't you don't you sully it. <laughs> don't you sully it with your fucking peanut butter, all right? You keep your your fucking deductible peanut butter over there. All right. If you use the peanut butter for, like, a, a stream or something, then it's content, which is deductible. I know that, Hunter. Well I'm giving advice that. to I'm, our listeners. I'm pretty sure I deducted that one time I bought you waffles. Uh, Probably. Yeah. yeah, most likely. I, but, yeah, if, if, it's a, if it's a business expense, it's a business expense. Deductible um, peanut butter. There's, there's smooth, there's crunchy, and then there's deductible. Yeah. Guys, I'm gonna, we I'm are, gonna make a I'm peanut, gonna make a TD. peanut butter. I'm gonna make a t shirt. Podcast. I'm gonna make a t shirt design that just says uh I deducted the cost of this shirt on my taxes. <laughs> that's that's really that's actually really fucking good. We would no lie, we need to we we will make a killing. <laughs> I'm gonna just <laughs> legitimately write that down. I don't remember what you said, I'll have to look at the tape. Thank you, Rosie. Good. Rosie's in the chat. She's got it. Rosie is, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, Rosie, thank Rosie you. is a, a, a certified Rest. angel. Um, Rosie just constantly uh, constantly earning the sweet at the beginning of their name. You know um, how many, like, learning credits you have to go through to get to be a certified a angel? A certified angel. <laughs> it's like you have to, there's so many hoops. And and it's not even that hard, but it's just there's so many hoops people don't even make, like, they don't, they don't mm -hmm. even. Yep. Yep. Thank you, Rosie. Appreciate you. Anyway, we're a TTRPG morning show, which means oh. we have a topic. We're going to talk about stuff. I got it on the dock. Yeah, Do I have, you have the dock. Yeah. Cool. Because uh, I made it. Yeah, it says introduction, riff about deducting peanut butter on your taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So. I do. Um, oh, the, chat, the chat is claiming that I don't have it open. Uh, C17R, I will message you a screenshot of my whoa, whoa, of me whoa, having whoa. this open. I'm not, let, gonna, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to give. I'm not going to show anything that uh, it's just going to say episode template up at the top. But I'm going to send him a screenshot already, of it. He's and now, and now he owes font. me five dollars. Um. <laughs> well, I get half of that. Yeah, I'll give you two fifty. Um, right. uh, Chris, C17R, you owe, uh, you owe Junie and I each 250 because, uh, we do have the, uh, the template up in front of us. So mm -hmm. there you go. 
you, you, you fucked around, now you find out. <laughs> Today's topic, fuck around and find out. <laughs> Today's topic is fucking around and finding out. <laughs> oh man Yo, it, seriously that is that is the today's topic though yeah because, today's like, topic is fuck you, around and find out also known as you, bards um uh, <laughs> that's good because you know what whenever you fuck around the first person that's gonna find out is the one person that's out there trying to catch you slipping that's true uh aka your rival your rival it's the one person that is trying to one-up you that is trying to like just either overtly or mm-hmm. not intentionally but they are the ones that are just the what you would consider the bad version of you you know what i mean the dinklebergs the or dinklebergs of, of the D- dinklebergs is a fan yeah. cat yes it's the yeah, this is where what I, mean? I would put my trophy if i had one yeah um yes the uh, the you said like the bad version of you. It could also be the better version of you. Oh, like, most definitely. I just needed a segue. Way. I just um, needed a segue into rivals. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, rivals, though. Uh, we, I, uh, we have we have talked. I, you and I previously about this. I don't know if we've ever like talked about this sort of thing on the show. Um, but having a sort of uh like a foil to your oh yeah your I, I might have i might have done it because it's actually uh a fun gag i usually like to throw in mm-hmm. um where it's we all like to like you and i know like to make it apparent that the world is changing and moving right. outside of what's the immediate vicinity of the party and yep. one of the ways i know i like to do it is I know I'm going to show this, get to this, mm-hmm. but if I allude to or introduce another party, then instead of them having to fill in so many gaps, they can kind of like go, oh, they're a party like us. We know how we would have done it. They can right. kind of like do some of the mental gymnastics. It's like a little shortcut I like to use. Yeah. Um, and and, and it plus, makes you it, know, it makes it easier to like kind of building on what you said like it, it makes it easier to show that uh your your party's actions have consequences like you you have choices that you're going to make and that are going to move the story forward but like if you choose one thing that means you didn't choose another thing and Correct. like there are other groups who might choose that thing um like i've had i've had parties that uh like left a quest on the table because they were like it's like a video game we'll come back here and that same quest will be available um Mm -hmm. and then they come back and it's like no that that quest isn't like somebody else took that they did that it's it's done already like i don't know i don't know what you're doing um you're you're crazy you've actually run like you have like a shared world so you've had like things interact with the, the closest i've ever come to that was playing like a one of those big TTRPG weekends where Mm, it's like mm -hmm. that they released a new campaign setting and it's like 70 tables are playing at once and like, like, Oh, you know, this, you know, things get aggregated and affect Mm -hmm. the each table like a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's like, you know, a a bit, it's different when it's like personal, when it's like, yeah, Yeah. it is another party. It's another individual. It's a foil. Um, Oh, I but, have I have groups in my like groups that play yeah. in my games that know the names of other groups in my games because Correct. they're like that gr- that group again. They're freaking they're screwing me my, over. My my there, there's antagonistic rivals, competitive mm-hmm. ones. I I tend to use ambiguous ones uh, because I like to just I like to let the party flavor a lot of things, and then mm-hmm. I pick that up and I run with it. Um, I. <laughs> Uh, I, I did something the other day where, uh, I monkeys pawed a, a deck of many fates and then somebody picked it up and it's really just, um, it showed them as a carpenter as mm-hmm. of this, it was their life. If they had different fates, mm. like if they chose different life, um, I like so they picked lot. like a cow. They, they it, it, but I did it like a trickster God mo- monkeys paw thing. That's what I always yeah. like to do. Yeah. And it's, to. um. As soon as they they pull it, uh, it was like a it was like a cowboy version of them. And as soon as like uh, everything like you know transitioned, uh, this is this is my Mert. My Mert uh, 
in in this world is the quest giver and what's so funny is there's teens that teens love to annoy an npc they like animals yeah, absolutely and they like annoying an npc yeah. they annoyed this npc so much i said that he had to spend a ludicrous multiple kingdoms worth of ransoms to get anti-annoying anti-annoyance enchantments all placed on himself so he has a sphere of like nobody can annoy him within that sphere so what i got to do was describe the immediate surroundings of them transform into like a western setting mm -hmm. except for his immediate circle stayed like his posh nice well-furnished den and there was new people there they didn't get to describe themselves uh and i said like uh we're gonna go through some of you haven't described yourselves don't worry about that what i want all of you to do is i want you to picture your person and now just tell me what they would look like if we had a Western version of them, I've never seen 12 people cheer harder because <laughs> apparently they all were very down for this. And the yeah. three people that were very new had never played D&D &D before. They were kind of confused. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. But uh, they, they had like Western versions of themselves too, like to, to mm -hmm. deal with the whatever. Um, but they, they, they put the flavor of like, of the, I left things up in the air and they took the flavor. So I said yeah. like, oh, uh, you tell me if you're speaking with like a country draw, a Western draw. If you don't know, you can roll mm -hmm. and we'll see if you do it. And some people chose it. Some people rolled yeah. to see if they would do it or not. Um, and it's those things where you could just describe like a generic party and then like, oh, yeah, he he has like, you know, a sword there. It's like, oh, he's murderous. And it's like, sure. OK, yeah, let's 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 take it that way. Yeah. Um, it, it reminds me you, of the, uh, uh, I think it was the, it was one game that you, you ran for like me and some other people on a stream, uh, where we like had the, uh, a fight with our, like, the uh, B versions of yourselves, the B, the B, yeah, the yeah. B version where it was like, okay, what's the, like, what's the C list version of yeah. you? Uh, I and say you just like, had who, us describe you had what that was. to cast your character, but poorly, who would yeah. they be? That's one of my favorite things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I love that. Uh, there is a, there's a web comic that I read like forever ago, um, that had a, like these adventurers were going through the dungeon, they're doing all this stuff. Um, and they, they get down into the dungeon and they're like going through it. And there's a room that had like a mirror in it. Um, and in the mirror, they saw reflections of like kind of similar to them, but like slightly different um and so it was like these this like alternate version of their party um and so like the uh the human fighter was like a half orc and the uh the the bard had a goatee and like uh mm -hmm. the like a b and c whatever um but it was like the like, kind of flipped version of their of their characters um and i always i always liked that concept i always liked the idea of a um like there is a alternate version of you which is like is mm -hmm. are they are they better or are they worse it's it's hard to tell but they're different they're just a, like they're going to make different choices than you would because they're just a different version of you um which isn't necessarily like the core at the idea of like a rival group but yeah uh, i it, it's a different version of that um have you ever have you ever ran a a, a game where you implemented like a, a a rival team as like a core mechanic of it the the closest thing i did was um i had a group this was very uh, rough on the in the first half hour but I, it was a, a good sized group and i told everybody to bring two characters and mm -hmm. i might have told you about this one i was uh everybody brought two characters because it was like a ravenloft one shot type of thing uh and i didn't know what they were going to bring so i wanted to tailor the situation to to their characters mm -hmm. and it was a little bit of dm shenanigans where I saw all their characters and I had, I had them, they were like, all right, so which one are we using? And I said, like, introduce them both. And they were a big, large uh, security force, essentially. Cool. And then uh, as soon as they got to, like, the one destination, floor went out. And then I pointed and I said, so-and-so wakes up, so-and-so. And I had one of each character wake up. And they were essentially looking for the rest of their party. Mm -hmm. um, 
the climax was the rest of the party shows up as like shadow revenants of themselves. The, the part that was like very, like had everybody like taken aback, they made those characters. Right. So they knew how dangerous they were. Right. There so if you would inherent... if you had really like min maxed and made that character just correct a, a crazy like thing. if I just if I just had shadow versions of themselves they would have been like oh that's me right oh like uh maybe this thing could it's like but they knew all the items that because I said oh this so and so this person can you hand me all those character sheets please and I had them just hand for them to go I'm handing you a way to kill me mm-hmm. was like here's was a weapon. Rough yeah here's something and one of them was like uh uh like a fighter with crossbow expert and he was he did kill one person like he yeah did like he was, he's very serious i've absolutely made characters where if a gm was like okay give me that character and now you have to like fight against them i would be scared <laughs> uh oh oh i wait what am i doing i i i had um the the only other thing where it was like a reoccurring rival yeah or or like villainy type thing was uh i think did i tell you about my pseudo dragon it, it was it was my home game they had a pseudo dragon they had a big fight in at level one whatever and they they took it out yeah every time there was a big fight i had the pseudo dragon come back but like clearly right. like frankenstein re- brought back to you know whatever yeah and everything else in the encounter was level appropriate except for the pseudo dragon mm-hmm. and it was one of those things where like they know this person's trying to stop them so it was like an antagonist um but it was always the way i used it was like a comic relief to like bring down the situation because it was always like right. a tense situation it right. was always like a tough fight and they would at least you, know it, it always only had like a, a small was, number of hit points they right? kept leveling up the pseudo dragon didn't right <laughs> i think at one point maybe i did have it like i think the, the the season like you know our big like before we took a break from it i think the big ender was i had it like turn into a young red dragon like and like kind of like level up essentially real fast yeah. but every encounter they ever encountered it it was the joke was they could at least swap that thing out of the way and it was like right. a, a morale boost it was like a something to like you know make you feel better it's like all oh, mm-hmm. these things keep beating us up and then just like take yeah. this one thing out it's always uh, it's always fun in a fight to have like something in there that is a negligible threat like the something mm-hmm. in there that is going to be a like you you can get rid of this in one hit like one person has to devote one hit to getting rid of this well, thing and and it made it, it made it kind of believable because it was one of those things where i think any player gets more into a, a game when they understand Mm-hmm. the rules of the world and mm-hmm. as long as you establish that through your storytelling through like setting up really good examples or just really putting it out on the on the top end like i just made it like this guy sucked right and no matter what happened he was always gonna you, so there was just a sense of love like, an npc yeah. who is just like <laughs> this guy's the worst you like immediately oh, well, he's yeah. just because an ass you don't hunter, like him we, hunter we all got an npc we default to and yeah. i don't like it I can channel a jerk yeah. very easily. I like to think I'm a I'm a nice person. I'm a big softy sweetheart, mm-hmm. good boy. But for some reason, if I had to go from zero to douchebag very quickly, I can. Not proud of it. Don't like it. I think I should talk to somebody about it. But I I, can. I think that people are usually pretty good at portraying I uh, like I. Uh, what they're not yeah like the Mm -hmm. opposite um of like uh especially if they've interacted with that type of person a lot in Mm -hmm. uh in their life like it it's it's something that people are usually pretty good at like mirroring at that point i I think i've asked you this before but Mm -hmm. do you do you have like a favorite npc line that you you work into you work into things oh because I always have my my jerk say the same thing every time, and I what's what's it's, yours? It's never, it's always like, um, not a misunderstanding, but like they make it seem like you oh you misunderstood or oh you did this or whatever, mm-hmm. and then I say I have them say I accept your apology, and then I look <laughs> at the player and I go you didn't apologize yeah 
that's like a good line. you didn't do anything to apologize they did just accept an apology that was not given yeah but i always have and it it's just enough of a line to let people know he's may not be evil yeah but this guy sucks yeah like I don't like this guy. And, 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 and I'll say like, I can't tell you how to feel about this person. All I can say is that I know I don't like them. Right. I, don't <laughs> I think personally I have, do not like them. I don't think I have a line that like I say for a lot of like for a lot that of one, different I, I know for a fact it just always weasels its way in. It's like, I accept your apology. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did just have a, uh, I had a session with um, uh, actually the, the group that C17R plays in um uh which is also the the group that uh my wife grace plays in um the we had a, a session uh last week where towards the end of the session my my wife's character had gone to find um uh her character worships the god of death um and so they had gone to find like a, a graveyard or a temple or something like that of uh Bio this, this person um yeah exactly uh but they when they when they got there there was this like uh priest shaman cult person um that was uh that was there and was kind of like attending to some things and they had this like long conversation with them um and in my world the god of death is a a good aligned god like they're very much a like death comes for everybody it doesn't like don't don't fear death like it it's it is the end like but it's the beginning of a new story you'll you'll go to like wherever you are supposed to go like i will make sure that you are guided there um like the the god of death is a good aligned god he's still like a god that a lot of people don't understand and fear because it's death um but like is is a good aligned god um this this priest that was there is not a follower of the god of death he's a, a follower of um a, a different darker god um and they uh they had this long conversation where um my wife's character uh her parents were like also followers of the god of death and were like warriors who were like fighting against the undead in the name of this god and stuff like that um and the conversation just kept revolving around like your your parents like died a pointless death they they Oof. died like fighting against these things that like they didn't need to they were fighting somebody else's fight like this whole thing um and then as she was as she was leaving uh she was like uh uh she's like my my parents weren't uh um like my, my parents weren't like cowards they didn't they didn't die and their their death wasn't meaningless um and his his line was something to the effect of i'm not saying your parents were stupid i'm saying they were puppets um and uh and then she like turned around to be upset at him and he was just gone um which was a a, a fun a, a fun moment that scene that That's upsetting that session was i was so mentally drained by the end of that session because we had a uh a fight that like very easily could have ended up being a tbk um mm -hmm. followed by like three very intense role play scenes in a row uh mm -hmm. and then like the end of the session and i was like oh man i'm i am drained but it was a good session um anyway uh in that in that same game uh very early on in the in the campaign uh their group is um they're agents of opportunity uh so the um they are like adventurers that are in the employ of the empire uh and the empire has like different like groups that they send out on missions and stuff like that um and so their like beginning couple of sessions were them trying to like earn a spot in the uh, uh in the agents of opportunity they were trying to like get their um uh they were trying to get their uh, uh their license essentially like join officially um and so i had set up this like whole tr like series of tests that they were going to have to go through uh but they were going through them against like other teams 
um, that were also vying for those same like limited spots. Uh, and so the, the first like session or two, um, I had given them like a massive grouping of NPCs, uh, that there were, there were probably like, uh, 50 NPCs uh, at the beginning that I had made and I made like uh, little hero forge tokens of each of them so that they were oh there was like uh, I, yeah. a, a face have, to associate well, you have that with it. One, you have like their subscription where it lets you do the thing like it like lets you get the screenshots easier. Yeah. 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 Um, I would do that hardcore. Yeah. It's it's so fun. Um, so I I had set that up and had like let them let them go and uh, interact with all of these different people so that they kind of had an idea of like okay who who do these characters vibe with who do they not vibe with who did they like just not interact with at all um, and then I took uh, those like fifty people uh, and uh, there were six groups that were going to be chosen to participate. Um, and then there are three groups that are chosen, uh, like the final three finalists were the ones that actually got to move on to be like actually agents of opportunity. Um, so right off the bat, there were a bunch of NPCs that just got like eliminated from the running that just didn't get picked by, uh, the, the different groups. So they weren't going to go forward. So the party is one group. And then there were, uh, five other groups of NPCs that were chosen. Then they got into the arena and they started like doing their stuff. Um, and based on how they had interacted with other NPCs and how the story kind of like played out, um, NPCs got eliminated in that, uh, in the process of going through that, uh, those trials. Um, and it ended with like, it's their group. And then there's two other groups that are like the, the final three. Hey, thanks for the follow. Um, that, uh, that made it into the like actual organization. And so now they're, group has like these two kind of other groups that they all entered the organization at the same time they're kind of all like vying for the same opportunities um but they're each group is very very different their group i kind of look at their group as a uh like neutral aligned group uh and then there's one group that is like very much a like a good aligned group where they're like uh going to uh um going to try and get the um uh going to try and get the uh these missions and stuff that for the good of people um and then there's the uh like more dark aligned group where they're like they're there for the glory and power sort of situation um and so it's just a a very interesting dynamic for me to have access to to play with of these different groups that are all running in sort of similar circles um, we haven't really gotten to dive that far into the actual connections between the party and those groups. Uh, but as the story unfolds, I'm, I'm sure those will continue to, uh, to develop. Um, well, you've been putting, you've been putting work in it. You know what I mean? Like you've been, you've been doing it. <laughs> you've, been, I, you've been putting work into this. I know you've been like, I love, is, this is I love fleshed story. out. <laughs> um, have you did you ever read the um I think it's called the Nether Deep? It was the one of the one of the critical role like official 5e books. No. Um there's a there's a setup in there for like rivals of like having um a a party that is working towards the same goals yeah, or okay. uh is um like set up to be sort of a like a mirrored foil to like uh not necessarily... I've seen something like that yeah 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 um i i haven't delved too far into like what they actually outlined other than kind of a, a brief glance um but it looks like at least a, a good starting place for anybody who's looking to kind of build that out um jenny are you are you on more of a like when you're, if you wanted to build out a rival for your party, would you go with just a, uh, like an obvious mirroring of the party, or would you try and do just like another party that is like kind of working towards similar goals, or what would your approach be, uh, to trying to introduce a party, and what would that party look like? It's easiest for me when I when I tailor it to 
the story and then like it makes it so the other the the rest i like i always like to make my campaign in a way where i can set up the structure in a way where it can go any different like it can flex however it wants but the skeleton mm -hmm. is there so it's like it can wiggle uh so i like to make the uh if i'm putting any sort of rival team mm -hmm. figuring it out right in the beginning uh because yeah you know npcs like can let you know hang around and mm -hmm. somehow uh you know i'm sure that a, a rival party can kind of like organically happen mm -hmm. uh but it's like if i if I, if it there is, is even a chance it could happen i like to think about it as early as possible and i like to make it so there's not a lot of direct interaction in my experiences i don't like because we all know people want to interact with npcs mm -hmm. so i always have them either pop in and out very strategically clearly out of reach type of situation or at the beginning or end of a situation um kind of like bookending to show the progression of that other storyline that the 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 to showcase how the world is moving on yeah. um because i can do it through other types of exposition but having another party be damaged uh mm -hmm. show the spoils of their victory uh have their reputation go up or down and yeah. can do a lot without me having to like i can just focus on that one thing changing everything else uh i don't have to like think about like uh I described everything. It's like, oh, I I have five people to juggle. I like to think of the rival party as one thing, right? Not not like, okay, I gotta think of the bard of that one. I gotta think of the this mm -hmm. of this one. Sure, make sure, sure, sure. The, the, if there's more interaction, they get closer and all that stuff. Yeah, they're gonna. I'll have to remember personalities and interactions, like relationships between the like the party. Uh, but I don't give them a direct one for one like it's you against this unless like it's a one shot or like that's the point of the whole campaign if i'm mm -hmm. just using them strategically it's um i'm using them as like a tool to progress the story the whole time yeah. and and making them not accessible really but just more of like a known factor in the world mm -hmm. that's just how i use them so um, somebody somebody mm -hmm. who's like out there um yeah but isn't necessarily somebody that the party is like directly interacting with yeah so that, more, that's just how more i like do they it, hear yeah. they hear the stories of that other group that are like uh i like uh when i was doing my heist campaigns um i would have i would have the there was always like a rival team on the same job mm -hmm. um and it would be like maybe they show up at the same time and then like so now it's not so much like I could decrease the difficulty of like how many enemies there would be uh, and sub in those enemies for the rival team. And it would still be like the same number of enemies or like, you know, moving pieces. Yeah. Uh, because they're also dealing with the enemies and they're dealing mm -hmm. with a security system and stuff like that. Uh, so it would just be like a, like a pressure, like where it's like, okay, we got to go because there's another team or, um, if whatever journey like you know they're going to get their objective if they don't fail some skill if they fail or pass some skill checks that's the determining factor of if they got there before or after yeah and i would have it like they get there and then it's gone or they'd get mm -hmm. there and then after they're done everything the end I, I i remember the end of a session being they they take out something that they had to take out and the last thing they see is like coming out of the woods is like the leader of a rival team that they had already like beaten to the punch and just the person looking at them and go you've got to be kidding me and then turning around and walking away and i've <laughs> i've done this more than once and every time they're like i want to stop them i want to say and i was just like they go they don't have the yeah. time they're like yeah. and just the the roll the checks i was like all right guys we're done it's like no 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 i want to chase them can i go uh, i want to throw a rope like like this is like mm -hmm. they're they're actively not trying to talk to you right. they are angry uh but just a little something where they know we're potentially making an enemy or oh mm -hmm. you know there's something else happening here but 
in the in the context I was doing, like they yeah. technically there shouldn't have been more than one person doing a job, so there was a mystery to solve. But like, well, and depending just on kind the, of like eh, moving it, spring game making everything more interesting. D- depending on the group that you're like that you're playing with, um, mm-hmm. you could you could very easily have a a group that's like I'm I I'm looking to like make a bunch of friends and they want to like befriend that group but like depending on the group you have you could easily have it be like a hostile relationship as well yeah um yep. i could see a situation like the one you said where i uh, if you if you created a, a a a rival situation where that rival is like constantly coming up short and is like the the yep. rival is the one that keeps losing like there's kind of two ways to three ways really uh to go about a rival situation it's either a like you're their rival where like yeah. they they see you as a rival because yes. you keep beating them um there's you see them as a rival where like you are like they keep they keep beating you or like a kind of give and take of like you're actively each other's rivals yeah. of like you're constantly against each other um, every every like thing for me usually has like some some factor of a role or their mm-hmm. decisions where in the back of my head to go this is keeping them from something or this mm-hmm. is moving the pace along and it's always a good teachable moment that if they want to do shenanigans or do other yeah. things that's just a y'all spent too much time buying sandwiches y'all didn't think that somebody was gonna go and do the thing yeah like well and it's it's so i feel like it's so often ignored that I uh, like as you are running a game, you want to keep track of kind of like the timing of things, um, mm-hmm. because in in a lot of games, a, a GM's just kind of like, yeah, you go to this place, you do this mm-hmm. thing, like uh, you A, B, and C. Like unless it is a the bad guy's plan happens in four days, um, and you have to make sure that you have like foiled it before that timeline. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's just kind of a thing that is open and and generic um uh i i feel like a lot of people don't have a reason to keep track of how much time has passed um Mm -hmm. but if you introduce a a a rival who is going after the same thing like the party is only going to be like beat to the punch on something probably one time before they're like oh, we, like, this will never happen again. Like, it still might happen again, but they will be, like, much more determined to not have it happen. And, yeah, yeah. Um, and I feel like the, uh, if you if you set up a rival situation where, like, it's a rival who, like, they consider the party a rival, but the party is just, like, it's just this other person who's just, like, not as good as we are. Um, th- when that person manages to beat them at something, that is devastating um and and i think this is kind of the big thing because i was going to say didn't you do this with something specific but then i realized it's different when it's like a reoccurring bad guy Mm -hmm. because you guys aren't working to the same goal right it's more of like they're just trying to stop you and Mm -hmm. um it's it's another thing when you're both like rivals you are both trying to one up each other to achieve something similar. You know what right. I mean? Like it, it may be not the same destination, but the path is similar. Yeah. So you're, you're referring something... to, you're referring to mongrel, uh, which is a, a, a character in my games who like was thwarted, like his evil plans were thwarted yeah. by the party a couple yeah. of times. Mm-hmm. And then the party just was like, nah, we've got better things to do and left. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he was like, what's better to do than stopping my, my plans. Yeah. Uh, and like he became obsessed with the party. Correct. Uh, yeah. And like his whole plans stopped being about like, I'm going to destroy the city and was like, I'm going to make you hurt for like having abandoned me. Correct. Uh, and he just kept getting worse until the party did eventually end up having to, uh, acknowledge him and go after him. Um, but yeah, that it's that is a, also, it is a what, different a different dynamic. But there's something there's something important about what you just said. It's like acknowledgement, mm-hmm. where if um the one like who's seeking acknowledgement and that's right. part of the like it's part of the rival the, dynamic. the drive. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like you're gonna acknowledge me as a threat. You're gonna acknowledge that I'm 
this good or mm-hmm. you're gonna like you know what i mean uh or or they're gonna want the other team's acknowledgement or something like that right and that it kind of makes it really fun when there is the whole one of them doesn't see the it's, other it's a as, fun dynamic to play with yeah because it's like you want you want to keep going with like yeah uh, we got you this time and i would love to be a part of a group where it was like a friendly rivalry mm-hmm. but it's role playing you know you kind of you do get to play in that space where it's just like what if can i <laughs> and i hate saying it like this because this it's not i'm not advocating for it but like you know a safe space to like just be mad at somebody mm-hmm you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, I'm not saying like we should play games to hate on a fictional th- whatever, sure. but you know what I mean? But like that, that like little, like, you know, oh, it's, yeah, I have to fight an ogre or something, but like, you're not playing it just with like the be mad at somebody. Of, like, I'm going to yeah, do this, but like, like, there's, it is a, 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 a safe place to like take out some of that like mm-hmm. frustration. Um, yeah. and I think the, like, if you look at a, uh if you look at the the game from like a party's perspective uh it is so easy to look at it and go if another party was just like not acknowledging the that your party uh Mm -hmm. and was just like they're like wannabe adventurers like they're they're nobodies Mm -hmm. and like they're like just you are garbage the 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 party is going to like your party is going to want to destroy them like they're going yeah. it, it is going to become a like they're the big bad of the part of the game because they refuse to like acknowledge that we're awesome um i've had a ton of parties that would absolutely be able to be like just baited into that sort of interaction um you have something on the on the outline that I want to uh, that I want to touch on, because um, you uh, you would put like there are different types of antagonists that can be used and like put some put some stuff on here, um, and you also said that like there can be uh, like different types of um, of rivalries, and one of the rivalries mm-hmm. that you outlined is this sort of like competitive rivalry where they're uh, working towards the same goal as the party. Um, it could also be very interesting if you're running a, uh, a campaign where it's not necessarily a, uh, a good versus evil sort of story. It's more of a, like, mm-hmm. differing opinion or differing, like, uh, yeah. differing objectives. Um, it could be very interesting to have, like, your, your group was hired by this person and another group is hired by this person and you are actively working against each other because those two people are like trying to achieve very different goals um Mm -hmm. but like you need similar you need to accomplish the same thing or uh like one one team needs to make sure that something is like securely like put away somewhere and the other team needs to make sure that they like get it and take it. Like if, if there are those like opposite ends, uh, rivalries that can also be a a very fun thing to play with of making sure that the party has that sort of like enemy. But if you can like make it clear that you're both just doing a job that you were hired for, like they, they see you the same way that you see them of like, a a group that is mm-hmm. actively working against their goal um like if if you introduce to your party a like a group of people that is actively preventing them from like com- doing their goal the party's going to treat them as if they're an enemy um and the other party is going to behave the same way of like this is a this is a group that like can't be trusted they're actively working against this thing i've been hired to like accomplish this thing so i need to make sure that this happens um like things could get very heated very quick over a very simple like you're just on two different sides of you're just people trying to live your life you're just trying to like you know yeah you know make it especially if you don't necessarily know uh like 
the overarching objectives of the pe- person that hired you. Like mm-hmm. if you're, oh man, if you can then twist that to be like revealed later that the part that the party is in the wrong, like they were trying to secure something for the person who is objectively going to do the worst thing with the, the item. Thing. Mm. Um, like that's that's fun. I I love a are we the bad guys moment. Like that's it's 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 very fun for me. I I have uh. My, I, I, it's like I, I know I need to figure out a better way to like advertise for it. Uh, mm-hmm. But like, I love my Ravenloft campaign where it is they're doing things that are like questionable. Mm. Uh, but it's like the person like is like, oh, it's just, trust them. They're trying to be uh, there. You know, it, it's in the name of science mm-hmm. <laughs> and and other things. And it's one of those things where on the front end it seems like you know they're like are we the we're 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 doing they're bad right and it's just like well you think they definitely could be bad what they're asking you to do isn't bad you know and it's just like but we're we're working for a bad guy right we're work well this is an evil scientist right like they're not right now so they're not currently an evil scientist but we know they've made monsters right, right. like are we crazy like we're where do we go here on this one? Uh, and just how far, how far to, to allow something like that? Cause mm-hmm. if something is not a threat right now, uh, <laughs> when will they become a threat? Right. Uh, how much do you give them and what pacing pacing? Mm-hmm. I, I pacing I, is so important. I, pacing. Yeah. I like to do a lot of fun on the front end and then I end up not, uh, and then end up having to rush at the end Mm -hmm. it's like imagine anybody doing a tiktok where you're like "Eh," and then you have to rush it at the end Mm -hmm. uh that's why if you know you're gonna do a a rivalry let the plan it out because otherwise you're gonna get lost in the sauce and it's also if you are if you're running a game where you are as part of the story you want a rivalry to form between like Mm -hmm. the party and somebody else there needs to be, you need to be flexible on who those rivals are going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, because you need the party to have a a buy-in for those rivals. There needs to be a, a reason for them to be rivals with those people. Like, one of the reasons, excuse me, one of the reasons that I haven't progressed the the rivalry stuff uh, between the different groups in my, in my one game I uh, one of the reasons I haven't progressed that story all that much is that the party hasn't like really been super connected to them yet. Like they're they haven't really had any like jobs that they're going up against each other mm-hmm. for. They haven't had anything that is like a um uh, a reason for them to have a rivalry. Um you're, it's you're, just, you're good at there. this. You're good at like uh really exemplify like because i i noticed you always really keep in mind the 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 goal or the the want of like your npcs and your and Mm -hmm. your and your groups and such me it's uh i i go like what's the purpose of them Mm -hmm. like i I think of everything as like a piece or something like that and it's it's two different ways to go about like a similar thing because if you think about what the what xyz wants Mm-hmm. then you'll know where they'll go and you can kind of predict that trajectory and where things might intersect. Uh, for me, it, it's like um, if I introduce them or they're here, it's like, what are they going to do? What are they there for? Mm-hmm. Uh, I know it's kind of nobody. W- I, I, I hate the, 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 the biggest stab to my heart uh, that I ever received as a, as a G as a GM was mm-hmm. uh, when a group came to me and they were like yeah you know we yeah we think this might be a good fit um we 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 didn't like playing with a gm that that made it feel like we're playing in their story Mm -hmm. and then uh like you know that we had and i was doing like a a a module and i added one fun like what i thought was a fun little side thing and it did Mm -hmm. kind of like focus on one or two people but in my head i'm like all right then the next session these two these people will get like almost like a, like a, a fun spotlight episode mm-hmm. type of thing. Uh, and as soon as that happened, they messaged me. It's just like, yeah, sorry. You know, I think we're going to go in a different direction. We don't like feeling we're in somebody's story. Sure. And like, they, and, don't, they don't like feeling like they're secondary. 
like like it's like oh we're just a, a we're like I can make my NPCs, uh, mm-hmm. my my monsters, my encounters, make my puzzle pieces like mm-hmm. however I want. But it's essentially like I'm putting like walls down in a maze to let like the mice run right. through it type of thing. No player wants to feel like they're Real, like, railroaded. also a mouse. Yeah, yeah like I'm yeah. pointing you in the stretch. You have to do this type mm-hmm. of thing. Um, so you can't use NPC. You can't use rivals in a sense like. I'm using these guys to make you do this. Right. You can't like, it doesn't matter if it's like, oh, we're the best hunters out there. And it's just like, yeah, we're focusing on money right now. So mm-hmm. that's cool. Hey, did you see how good hunters we are? We got all the pelts. And it's like, yeah, great. We're really making a lot of potions right here. We're really, where do you know where potion yeah. stuff is? It's like, no, but we know where pelt stuff is. Yeah. And it's just like, cool. Well, I don't want to talk to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can't, uh, if you do want to make rivals, you can't shoehorn them in, right? Uh, unless rivals their point have is to have a natural a, a point build. Uh, yeah. And if the point is they're annoying, then you have to strategically use them yeah. because yeah. otherwise you are taking the fun out of everything. So I like making NPCs that people love to hate, but mm-hmm. I can't just put them into everything because then it gets old. You know what I mean? Uh, my uh. I do love putting a love to hate character and then it's like, oh, we got to save, we got to save Derek. Oh man. Well, we keep Derek alive. And it's like, then it's kind of funny. Yeah. But like you can't have them spring in all the time. And it's just like, I, can we have a session where we don't like, this is the lowest part of every session that we have to deal with blank. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's, it's a matter of no, know, know their why. And like, how you plan to use them Mm -hmm. uh and if they come up like organic later on you kind of spring it up okay but what's the why 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 what what are they doing to enhance your story to enhance your game to enhance everybody's experience Mm -hmm. at the table and i think it's i think it's important to unless unless you are looking for a like a rival who is just this is the other group that is going after like the same thing as you and like they're they're just there to provide a like a time crunch agency uh like if if you if you want a true rivalry it can't be a rivalry of um this mysterious like other group of thieves is going after the same thing that you are and like ah curses that other group of thieves like they, it, there needs to be a um there needs to be identification to it they need to have somebody to associate that with um and there also needs to be a level of like humanity to them it can be they can be bad people but like there needs to be a a believable human element there um in order for people to like latch onto it and have strong feelings about it um like if you if i tell you that like ah yeah there is a group of bandits that is going to be trying to steal this and you need to like steal it before the group of bandits can you are not now rivals with that group of bandits. Correct. The, the group of bandits are an obstacle. Um, it is an encounter you will have to have at some point. There, You have not associated any sort of like mental or emotional buy-in to that. You need an emotional or mental buy-in from players in order to have a rivalry. Um, Correct. One of the things that I, I, I saw on... Oh boy, what... what I, I listened to too many podcasts. Um, you need I, to tell me I something because I think it was Google not podcast another podcast is going down, and I need I need recommendations again. I think it was not another D and D podcast, mm-hmm. uh, Nadpod. Um, they did a uh, this like um, uh, like beach summer adventure type thing. Um, Mm -hmm. and as, as part of that, like they're all in this beach city, uh, doing like fun beach things. And then also there's another group that is like talking smack on their group for this like big contest that's at the end of the, uh, at the end of the summer or whatever. Uh, and so this other group is like talking smack on them and they are, uh, like 
talking smack back and they're like, oh, we're going to crush them. Like, that's a very easy way to sort of mm-hmm. uh, establish a, 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 a playful rivalry. A playful mm-hmm. rivalry can then be changed into a, a a different format. Um, a playful rivalry that then, like, they do something that is more antagonistic is like, oh, this is no longer playful. Like, you have, mm-hmm. like, we had a fun thing going, and now, We're, like, like I don't like now. you. There's, um, there's a thin line between rivals and enemies. Right. Uh, one of the things I did in one of my games uh, was I put a, a a group that the party was, like, had actively been working against. They didn't like this other group. Um, they didn't know any of the people in that group. They just knew like the name of the group. Um, mm-hmm. And so they had this like team name, essentially that they were like, we hate that team. We don't like that team. That team has like stolen jobs from us. The team has like uh, screwed us over. They got actively framed for something that the, uh, the oh, other God. team had done. Like they did. a, It, it was bad. Um, so they didn't know any of the actual people on this team, just the name of the team. And then they were like out in, uh, in the city. The one time they were, uh, like in the tavern, they're like having a good night. They're partying They're Uh, there's like a show being put on and stuff. And they, uh, they met an NPC there who was like also just there like partying, uh, talking about how like, yeah, they, they just finished a job. They're like going to be heading out soon. Their party already like moved on. So like they just have, they just have tonight where they're going to like have some, have some fun and then they'll catch up with their team. Uh, and so the party was like, oh yeah, like, Hey, join our party for the night. Like we'll, we'll hang out with you. We'll have a good time. It'll be great. Um, and so they spent an entire session bonding with this character, Just chilling with him, um, and being like, "This dude's dope. We love this guy. Like, uh, hey, like, this guy d- rules. you should, you should, you should like leave that other group and uh, and like roll with us instead." Uh, poaching, like they're poaching, uh, they're poaching this guy. Yeah, and uh, and then they found out that like his other group is that group. Um, And like that group doesn't know them. This, their group didn't know the other group. They just like knew Mm -hmm. the names. Uh, And so it was easy for that other group to frame this group that they didn't know. And it was easy for like this group, their group to hate that group for doing so. Um, But then they had like a name uh, and they had like a face for like this person. And I, they like that person had already left the way I revealed it was like that person had left and had like left his jacket in their, uh, in their room after like partying, his team jacket. They, had, they had left first <laughs> thing in the morning and they like found his jacket in the morning. And I was like, Oh yeah, you find his, his jacket. Like they're like, Oh, we should, we should try and track him down to return it to him at some point. Uh, I was like, make a, make a perception check. And they make a perception check. Uh, and they notice that there's like an emblem stitched into the, uh, the shoulder of the jacket that they had missed the night before um that is the like symbol of that other party um and the the immediate betrayal they felt was palpable um and then they ended up like encountering that other group at one point and that person was there and there was just confusion from that person as like they gen that npc genuinely didn't know who they were um, when he like met up with them and started partying mm-hmm. with them that night, um, genuinely didn't know. And so then when they met up and there's like conflict now, uh, he was very conflicted because he was like, I liked these people. I genuinely liked these people. I don't know what to do in this situation. And they were just fill. They thought that they had been like, uh, used and that that person had like tried oh to get information on them. It got so rough. Everything you did um, was like very like, okay. Yeah. But it's, it's one of those things where like, if you, if you can give them a emotional, mental connection to a character, it's much easier for that character to then become a rival. Mm-hmm. Um, betrayal is something that will immediately convert to like that sort of uh, antagonistic rivalry of like, we're going to destroy that person. We're going to beat that person because that person is uh, not, not somebody that we want mm-hmm. around. Um, 
but yeah, I think there's, I think there's a lot of different ways to approach it. Um, are there any, are there any aspects that you think are, um, like key things that should be incorporated into a rivalry? Uh, I think it, it an intention should be very overt. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, players like it when they know what's going on sure. uh they shouldn't have to do so much guesswork to realize that like whether or not this is like just a you know a mystery is fun and whatnot mm -hmm. but if they have to spend like five sessions before they go like this is the purpose of these other guys mm -hmm. it, it, it gets it, it'll get daunting you don't want to do that so make make the intention of like these are like the question would be something? figuring out what the other Correct. party is trying to do. Yeah, you don't want it to you don't want it to detract from like what your your main goal for the whole thing mm -hmm. is. So uh don't make it too don't make them too mysterious. Don't uh don't make them uh so involved where it's going to derail their 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 very presence is just going to derail. Um so uh it's one of those times where you should uh unless it is part of the plot where it's you need to steer it that way just mm -hmm. lay out be overly descriptive be overly like generous with those insight checks or like you know what they can put together mm -hmm. um uh but i think uh the, the the one thing is like you the party should definitely know what's going on with them as far as mm -hmm. like they are uh, uh you know they're competing for something they're trying to beat us to something they're whatever it is um and don't make them overly complicated or so numerous mm -hmm. where even if you sprinkle them in a little bit now you have to juggle so much mm -hmm. because it's just like oh i made a k-pop boy band there's eight of them now <laughs> i have to like use them all and if i don't if i introduce that there are eight of them and i only use three of them now they're suspicious of where the other ones are like you know what i mean like make it something manageable um uh I, I don't know why but you said something about like uh like uh like i think you said like a b team or you said a b squad b side or something like that and mm -hmm. i just thought of like a gag like i like doing uh uh gag gag teams yeah. so <laughs> instantly i uh was already like oh i think i would have like at the end of a session there would be like an individual uh very, and i would describe them very specifically uh in a very specific type of cloak and just like whatever character personality i give them they have one very pointed reaction uh interaction with the party like they give them something they do whatever but it's something memorable enough where it's like they'll remember barry you know what i mean mm -hmm. and then the next time they see this familiar cloak that familiar face or something like that um, a little bit different of an interaction. Maybe they get something from them, whatever. And he says, uh, you know, he's just like, uh, but this is buddy. And then it's a fun little just side mystery of what well, this is where I'm not following my own advice because I might be making it too interesting. They mm -hmm. have to decide, are those four people or one guy? And he just keeps giving them different names. Uh, and I just, I just imagined you were, you said the other party has another name. That's what it was. That's what mm -hmm. triggered it. Because I just imagined a, an adventuring party called the B team mm -hmm. and it's Barry, buddy, Benny and Barney. <laughs> and then like the party always only intercount and like, encounters one of them and they all look the same and then the it's like yeah. yes yeah. and then it's like they have to go is it the same dude yeah and he's do just we got hate a, one guy or do we hate all four of them do we hate benny or is like is this just one guy that's messing with everybody mm -hmm. type of thing um but that could be a fun like comic relief type thing mm -hmm. uh so in my head i'm like i know i can't put them in all the time i need to ba ba make it very poignant like they kind of happen on them and then that's it. And then right. done interaction. It might drag uh, because they're going to want to, but I know this person isn't going to want to let that drag. Yeah. So they, 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 they get out of there. Um, so and, manageable and, after and, a, and purposeful. Af and after a good like payoff of a, like a rival moment, that rivalry mm -hmm. should fade away for a while. 
Like it Correct. should you like if you just push a like session after session after session Correct. is just them against these other teams. Like that becomes the focus of the campaign. A good yeah. rivalry if needs to yeah. like go in and out. They should be given the opportunity to have almost forgotten about them uh, and then mm-hmm. have them show up and like remind them why they hated them in the first place. Yeah, it, it, it has to be unless that is the point of the campaign is right. like you need That's to a, do this an important before. Distinction. Yeah, if you are if the whole point is the, the one hiring you says, like, I want you to do this goal. My I have a rival and he's also hiring another group. So now they're your rivals by mm-hmm. association. You need to do it before them. That's what mm-hmm. I'm paying you for. And that like always try to give them a clear motivation. I like to make usually I just go like a ludicrous amount of money. Mm -hmm. But if it's something where it's competition, it can be pride, whatever it is, reputation, just whatever their motivation is, if that is going to be like, then it has to be all right, they're going to be in here frequently enough. uh, But they can't be throughout the whole the whole session the entire Mm -hmm. time because you're just doing like what is it what's it called uh you're just having a a player pc where it's just like you know it's just like yeah yeah now now you're just having the party watch you play right which is you know that's not cool you know don't don't do that either uh so sprinkle them in and then that that's on to me that doing it if you're gonna do a rivals campaign Mm -hmm. i think it's very funny to do uh the end cap of 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 a session or of like the re- resolution of a mission is finding out where the other team is you never see them but your quest giver does know if they did it or not and he tells you you guys did it you guys got the dragon egg um the other team did get two uh they did get two dragon eggs uh so that that kind of sucks uh but um you know next time uh we can do this uh you know so it's like they'll do it and they're just always hearing about these guys uh so like that might be a fun little whatever and then maybe there'll be an episode where they deal with them but i love the concept of like the it's not that the party failed to complete their mission it's just that the other team did it better um uh oh oh, that was actually yeah i told somebody uh i I had new players and I told them that low rolls don't necessarily mean failure. Yeah. It just means it might mean that it's not as cool as mm-hmm. you as you expected. And I gave them all free time. And I remember <laughs> I remember going, uh, what do you do? And they s- described like doing some chores and errands and uh and they rolled like a like a two. And I said, All right, um uh, oh no, they said they, they hung out with their mother. Uh, and they rolled real low and I was like, okay, do you like talk about your adventuring life to your mother? And it's just like, yeah, I think I would. And it's just like, uh, are they, how do you think they feel about it? I was like, they're, they're okay. They're happy with it. And I'm like, okay, well they are, but with that role, she will listen to you tell your story. And then mm-hmm. she'll say, it's like, oh, that's real good. Gladys's son, uh, he did. And it was that, it was that situation of like, oh, Gladys's son, he, he did that too, but he did it with this better. And it's like, oh dang that sucks <laughs> like that that really sucks yeah so it's just like she supports you but she also reminds you yeah. that gladys's son they also blank blank you know yeah yeah oh you um uh, you made it through the the lost minds of fandelver mm-hmm. that's nice that's cool you know terry from down the street he just defeated a sarah rack so yep. what are you doing what what did all that money I sent uh, I spent on sending you to adventuring college go? One thousand percent. Um, the I I love that so much. Um, you you mentioned like uh giving giving the and uh giving them some sort of like uh flair or recognizable thing like a like a specific cloak or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. I think I think giving a a rival group some sort of like identifier so that the party can recognize them without actually having to see them 
or without you actually having to say that they're there is very, very compelling. Um, like if there is a uh, like a, a logo for their uh, their group, if there is a um, like a specific uh, cologne that the the one person wears every time, if there is a uh, like a specific drink order that could be associated with one of them, oh. like uh, things like that is like giving. If you can give, uh, um, if you can give those characters a like identifier, something that is mm -hmm. significant and unique about them that the party can see and like associate with them, that's very very interesting. Um, so like if you have a uh, imagine your party. Uh, arrives late at night to this town. They're on their way to this mission. They arrive late at night. Um, get to the uh, get to the tavern to like get rooms and stuff. They get settled in. Um, they uh, they go down to the tavern and they know that like their rival when they uh, when they interacted with them in a tavern forever ago, um, his drink order was like very specific. Like he, it's like a very intricate drink that's served with like it's a it's a rocks glass with like a kind of purplish like a dark purple liquid in it uh and a cinnamon stick sticking out of it and a uh, uh just kind of smells like smoke um and they walk down into the tavern to like order food and stuff and as they do they like smell something that smells like smoke and they look down at an empty table and there is a like a glass that is like drink but there's a little bit of like a dark purple liquid still at the bottom of it and a cinnamon stick sticking out of it and you can smell smoke and the party's immediately going to be like we only know one person that drinks that like mm -hmm. they're they're here somewhere uh and then you have an opportunity for them to like go talk to the like the bar uh person and be like hey who ordered this and where are they and the bar oh, oh he he came in he, he got a drink he just headed out like he left about five minutes ago um and now it's this thing of like the person their rival was here and has mm -hmm. already left um yeah. and so it's like probably on his way to do the thing that they are like after but like they just checked in to stay here for the night like they're 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 <laughs> already right behind the um mm -hmm. if you give them those like identifiers those like very specific traits it it makes it very very uh easy for the party to know like oh I know who this is and like mm -hmm. I have a, an immediate reaction to that especially if there uh, are like different things for different people that like they're able to kind of like pick up on um, that gives you the ability to kind of play with those things um, the uh, you can also you could start a like we've talked a lot about group rivalries but you could start a group rivalry with one person like you could have oh yeah one person who a, like a the person party can forms be, a, yeah. a a rivalry with and then they build a group yeah like it, it it like it's it's about like like I said I like to group the the group as one entity uh, mm -hmm. and you can just do it as literally one entity you don't need to do it where it's like it has to be a lot of people can juggle. You can make a multifaceted character, mm -hmm. a complicated character that is doing a lot of things and hitting a lot of, you know, specific notes uh, for like just everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a delicate balance. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where it's such a fun little thing that, you know, seems like, Oh, you could just throw it in wherever. Mm -hmm. And it's, something that can just take away from yeah it has yeah. to be sparingly and it can very easily take you in a direction you didn't want to go and then it's a tangent that you yourself created at that point it's not mm -hmm. like oh man they they got sidetracked at that you know carnival now they're going to spend time there it's like no you had a goal and then you had them hunting a party that's off doing something else mm -hmm. and you can pivot and you could, you know, make that make sense. And like, you know, you, nothing ever has to be wasted. You know, if they don't right. know where, what you had planned, just move that over here now. But you know, you're creating more work for yourself. You're creating mm -hmm. like, I got to pivot and do stuff where it's just like, I could have put them here. I could have like left these as options and, mm -hmm. and, and all that. 
So it's uh it's it's a it's a fun thing. Rivals can be uh they can motivate us to be to be better or they can mm-hmm. frustrate us. Uh it's 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 a it's a fun it's a fun thing. D- uh, did you have a rival growing up? Did you have Ooh. somebody you were just like Dinkelberg? Who's your <laughs> who's in the chat? Who's your Dinkelberg? Who's your Dinkelberg? Um it's got like the opposite energy of like I'm your Huckleberry. Um it's just <laughs> who's your Dinkelberg? Um the I think I don't think I had necessarily a a rival. Like I had brothers. Um, Mm -hmm. so like we kind of had like sibling rivalry, but I, I don't think that's a thing. I don't think I necessarily had a, like, that's a fun, that's a a fun plot. A rival. Yeah. It's just the sibling sibling rivalry and the other party is all siblings of, of the party. Yeah. Um, I, I like that. Um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think I had one growing up. Not that, not that comes to mind at least. Um, there are, I found out, I, I've realized later on that I was to a lot of my cousins, uh, o- only because, uh, there was, uh, I was closest to my grandma mm-hmm. and I t- wasn't trying to do anything, but, uh, but apparently a lot of people brought me up as just like, well, Junie, whatever. Uh, and, and not that like anybody was striving to me. I think they right. were annoyed. I was the annoying yeah. one where it's like, I was being compared. I was like, it's just like, well, Brandon did this. And it's just mm-hmm. like, uh, <laughs> that's really funny. Um, People hated me. <laughs> no, uh, no. Uh, but, but yeah, I think, I, I think if you look at, if you look at like writing a, a game, like writing a, a story as like, um, like cooking a, a, a dish. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Like things like a a rivalry is a seasoning. It should not it should not overpower anything in the dish. It's there to enhance other things. If you mm-hmm. add too much of it, it's all you taste. Um, mm-hmm. so if you are if you're gonna put like a rivalry in there, you should put the rivalry in there. You should let it like be there. It should simmer a little bit. Um, but like it should be there to enhance other things. Um, anything that you add to a story that you're creating should enhance the overall story. Um, Mm -hmm. anything that is there that becomes a, this is all there is, this is all you taste is overpowering and shouldn't be in the dish. Mm -hmm. Um, so when you're, when you're trying to put like a, a rivalry into your game, you need to make sure that you're putting it in, in a way that is, I uh, elevating the story as a whole. It's not just sidetracking everything. Um, mm-hmm. and that you're not dropping it so often that it becomes a primary focus. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Any, yeah, uh, I, I was any, just thinking about sidetracking. Else? Yeah. I, I was thinking about sidetracking mm-hmm. and it would, it, it's one of those things where it's like, it can be done if you do it with intention and don't just let it happen. Like, catch you off guard Mm -hmm. because imagine an obstacle or whatever sort of thing that is like the the party has to face but they have to face it because like oh this door this door trap is like oh this should have been easier to to like disarm whatever a party just already disarmed it or messed Mm -hmm. with it like maybe intentionally or not but like you have to deal with the repercussions of another party. Mm-hmm. Uh, so oh, it's just a, like they can arriving at, or the opposite. You arrive at yeah. a dungeon to find that everything mm-hmm. is already disabled. The immediate yeah. mm-hmm. panic that would set in. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, but they can, they can, you know, do create challenges uh, or make things uh, like new obstacles that mm-hmm. like are not what they expected um, and, or create conflict. Uh and it's just, and if they do interact, it's fun. It gets fun role play opportunities, mm-hmm. but you know, yeah. Um, uh, awesome. So good times. Uh, <laughs> I'm awake. You are. I'm awake now. Well done. All right. We can start the show. Biohacked. Uh, so yeah. Hunter, what, are, what, 
what uh, what are going to be our calls to action this weekend? It's a good question. I've been trying to like I've been toying in the back of my head. Start like, some shit. Is that is that is that I, just I don't, like I don't think that should be it. Is the that's the problem I'm hitting. Is like you know what though you know a lot funny? of the rivalry I, I do, options I'm coming up with are I, I do, very I do antagonistic. Want, I I think that there's like friendly rivalry options you can do. Sure. And I think there was one time I suggested something. You were like, I can't do that because uh, it's not the dynamic between you and Grace. But me and my wife, we play uh, New York Times uh, uh, yeah, the games yeah, yeah. like the Sudoku stuff. So we do connections. Uh, I would definitely say uh, do, do a words with friends, yeah. do a, a, a wordle or something like that. But just like it doesn't have to be like we're fighting. Some, but just some like, friendly you know, got, rivalry between. Yeah, I start. Yeah. I got the wordle in three. I got the wordle in two. It's like uh, or like connections. That is. Yeah. Oh, man. If you don't know connections, I get it. Uh, but most of the times I don't because I use all my guesses trying to figure out the one I do know instead of doing all the other ones. So, uh, my, my, my success to failure rate is sucks. Um, uh, but start some friendly shit. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't start have some, to be start some friendly rivalries yeah. over a, yeah. like a, a fun game be, like that. Yeah. It doesn't have to be, uh, and crazy. Uh, I saw somebody on do- TikTok who did is doing a, uh, they did like a March madness, um like office competition where they had built mm-hmm. like a, a bracket and they were putting people up against each other in the office uh and so like the first week it was uh like that paper toss app um mm. the, se- the second one there was like a like a quiz that they had to do and they're like going through and having them do all these things to like crown the champion of the uh the office so so yeah, we, we, there's different kind of rivals. So I think there should you should do different kind of rivalries this weekend. Mm-hmm. I think you should do a little friendly one where it's like a friendly, fun game like that. But then rivals can like push you to be better, or something like that. Mm-hmm. So like, uh, I'm not advocating for any specific app like My Fitness Pal or Google Fit or Apple Fit or anything mm-hmm. like that. But if I know that there's all these apps that you can just add a friend or something like that, mm-hmm. and then just track who's drinking more water, uh, just uh, yeah. get, get a challenge challenge a friend uh, to be your your fitness rival, mm-hmm. uh, and it's like, yo, let's see who can lose more weight or like, so let's drink more water. Do do don't, a, don't do, do the a lose more weight you... one. It, it's a recipe for disaster. It's, yes, it is. It is. Uh, but you know. Do Something competed where it's in like, those uh, before it uh, immediately uh, it, could, uh, it immediately went poorly uh it could be that it could be reading uh it could be like a, a good reads one where it's like hey let's see if we can like finish a book uh who can read mo- more pages or something like that but something mm-hmm. to like uh better better yourself improve your quality of life do something like mm-hmm. hey I, I i slept this many hours uh but like a <laughs> fun fun game rivalry and then a, a a betterment rivalry yeah um and then i don't know there's you can do angry rivalry where it's just like you do mario kart or monopoly but i don't know uh that's like there's ways to to yeah. like get angry have a aren't have, gonna actually have ruin a friendly your have a friendly rivalry where you're gonna like uh we're gonna have a do not, the last uh, one's a not so friendly friendly rivalry where like mario kart or like you get like Uno. i think that like, i think that falls into the second one of like some sort okay. of some sort of like a little bit more like there's stakes on the line the third one is uh start a rivalry with yourself uh where you're where you're like i know what my personal best was previously but i'm going to destroy previous me uh Ooh. and then just like do uh, be your go, own rival be your own rival uh like always mm. always try and beat the previous version of you um <laughs> be better that's got some <laughs> that's got some weird like uh some weird like big guy on a podcast energy me, me, like, me, never me, stop me improving just be, be, never beat your past self into submission me me and my wife i don't know if this is gonna embarrass us, either one of us but we we would say something like if one of us kind of goops and yeah. does something like oh i left my key in the lock you know mm-hmm. before whatever uh <laughs> we just say something along the lines of like uh like be better and yeah. by better just don't be the worst yeah and it's kind of become like our family motto which kind of sucks because it's not like be better like you know always strive to be <laughs> right. the best it's like be better as in like just suck a little less yeah <laughs> we we do we do the same thing here uh we also will just like call each other like just 
absolute buffoons and like things like that where it's like you just you uh you like toss like tossed my keys into the like bowl next to the door so that like i don't lose them i like toss them and i miss and it's just like you absolute insanely doofus like you Mm -hmm. have you have failed in such a wildly spectacular way and it's like (laughs) I, i missed i missed a throw you are, you are just, you this is why we can't have the, nice things. The um, most garbage. The <laughs> most garbage. <laughs> you are the most garbage, um, said with all the love in the world. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you, everybody, for uh, for hanging out with us today. Thanks for uh, joining us for, for Warlocks and Waffles this morning. Um if you uh if you have a game that is like that has rivals in it or you are like uh, a player that you are uh in a game where your your character has a rival uh send send us a message let us know what that looks like send it in uh the discord let us know what your uh what your character's rival is um we will be back on monday with more nonsense um so join us then same time uh we will be we will be back and and do more uh more stuff um until then have a great weekend everybody uh remember to embrace the nonsense and we'll see you monday bye guys